You ain't taking me alive, lawman. I'm a highfalutin, rootin' tootin' son of a gun from Arizona. Well, actually, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, award-winning Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its third edition. Also, our brand new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings. You know, those of us who are members of the Boy Scouts, now Scouts BSA, might remember the neckwear that formed part of the uniform. It was known as a neckerchief or kerchief, and when folded, became a pretty nice triangular piece of cloth that had many, many uses. Many former Scouts are still following that old motto. That motto was, be prepared. While the preparedness movement doesn't have a uniform, triangular cloth can be found as a bandage in many medical kits meant for times of trouble. And well, it should. The triangular bandage is lightweight, compact, and versatile as all get out. It's also very, very affordable, and everyone should have a few of these in their medical storage. Here are some of the ways that you can use the triangular bandage to deal with injuries off the grid. Now, I'm not saying that these are always the best way to deal with the trauma in question. Just what you can do if all you have is a triangular bandage or two in your pocket and maybe some found objects. To paraphrase an old saying, there's more than one way to splint a cat. Nurse Amy will now demonstrate on an antique dummy. This is a demonstration of how to stabilize a sprained ankle. Now we have taken off his boot because our triangular bandage is not quite long enough to keep it on. If you have something else that's a little bit longer, that would be great. So we have removed the boot, but we're going to stabilize this ankle. Fold it up to be three or four inches so you don't cut into the skin. Go across the top of the foot, cross on the bottom, go to the back of the ankle, cross there, come to the front, Again, crossing. Take the excess, go underneath the sides here, and do the same thing on the other side. Give this a little bit of a tug because you want to make sure that the ankle doesn't move too much. And then you're going to go ahead and tie it on top of the foot. Now I would make sure that you do have a sock underneath there or at least some padding. You don't want this to be directly on skin. You want to make sure that you have padding here. I would also check the circulation. I would cut off this portion of the sock, check capillary refill, make sure that the tissue is nice and pink. I would also make sure that you had a pulse here so that you know this is not too tight. But this is a nice way to stabilize an ankle. Okay, today we're going to demonstrate uh, how you would hopefully put pressure on a hand injury. So let's say he was bleeding, hopefully he stopped. We have extra gauze that we use for direct pressure, but at this point we have just used an extra triangular bandage. So you could use that for direct pressure. Hopefully we've stopped it, but you want to maintain pressure. And I don't have an actual pressure dresser, so we're going to MacGyver one. You want to maintain the pressure. You want to take the folded up triangular bandage. Try and keep it about three or four inches wide. I think that always makes it better. Sort of drape it over the hand like this. You want to try to maintain some pressure while you're wrapping. Now you can use the saying of thumb pinky pinky thumb when you're learning how to wrap this. I'm going to turn your hand like this only for the camera purposes and maintain the pressure. So bring around the actual long piece that's on the thumb. Go down towards the wrist and let that hang down. Now we're going to do the pinky and we're going to wrap that long piece by the thumb and then we're also going to go and do the pinky again and go under the thumb by the wrist and let that hang. Now the last one that we do is the thumb. So we're going to take that piece, go around the wrist. Now we have two pieces down on the wrist. If it's too long, you can wrap it back around and come to the top and place your knot in that location. And that's what it looks like. Thumb, pinky, pinky, thumb. Exactly. Okay, now we're going to demonstrate how to hold a SAM splint on for a lower leg injury. So you can see this is a SAM splint. We folded it according to the directions. You want to make sure that any area that may touch, let's say he didn't have his boot on, touch skin, that you can 
going to want to have padding so that anything that secures it does not cut into the foot. But we don't need that because we're going to be leaving the boot on. So you want to take your first tie, wrap it around the ankle, come underneath the foot to the top of the foot, secure that with a double knot. And then you want to move up a little bit. Again, don't make this too narrow. You can go around twice. Come around to the front. Again, make sure the tie is not on the skin. I would either put it on this side or the other side. Again, double knot. And you can tuck that into the split material so that it is not in the way. And that's actually very secure. What we're demonstrating here is someone who has a head injury. So you would definitely want to put some clean gauze on top of it. And I'm going to ask the patient to just maintain some pressure just for a moment while I set this up. You're not going to fold this triangular bandage except for about one inch on the top so you have a fold there. Okay, and you want to start just above the eyebrows. Now go ahead and take your hand out. Now put your hand back on the pressure. Exactly, thank you. You want to take the two longer ends here and you're going to tie them over the piece that's hanging down straight in the back. You want to make sure you go over the ears. And give this a little bit of a tug. Then we're going to come to the front. Okay, you can remove your hand now. Make sure this is over the forehead. And I'm bringing this around twice so it slips easier. Like this. And then one more. And you want to tuck these ends into that fold, obviously so it doesn't go down on the patient's face. And then you want to go in the back and that excess piece, maintaining pressure here, you want to give it a little pull. And what that does is that actually tightens around the gauze on the top of the head. Let me see that. And then you can go ahead and fold this up here and also tuck that into the edges so that it's not just hanging down. And that is a wound dressing on the head. Today we're going to use a triangular bandage as a tourniquet. Make sure that you folded it up not less than two inches. You want to go two to three inches above the wound. Make sure this is even. Go around once. And twice, you want to tie it one time underneath whatever you're using. Make sure you tie it over the padded area. And he just happens to have a screwdriver. We're going to put that in here, tie one time around that. There's a lot of different things you could use. And then we would turn this, and we would turn this and turn this until the bleeding stops. So let's put a little bit of pressure on here. And we're going to say the bleeding stopped. You want to make sure that it doesn't unfold itself. So you're going to need to wrap around that piece. And so we need to go here, bring this to the back so it prevents it from turning, and go underneath and just go ahead and tie it. So what I did was I took a piece of this bandage right here, went behind it, Actually, you can twist it twice, depending on the material, so that it doesn't unwrap. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm keeping tension on this. Take the other piece, go underneath, and then tie that off. You want to make sure that you're tying off over the padded area. Again, you don't want any of this string or the, pad, the uh, triangular bandage to be on the skin directly, because you don't want to put any pressure on just skin. But this 
We'll keep it from un unwinding. Okay, now we're gonna demonstrate an eye injury. It could be a chemical eye injury. If that's the fact, then we're actually going to have irrigated the eye. You wanna have your left or your right eye injured? Your left, okay. So wanna make sure you tilt the eye so when you're irrigating, that chemical that was in the eye does not run into the other eye. Makes sense, right? Make sure you also wear gloves. But you want to have irrigated that. If it is strictly something that's gotten in the eye, it's a small piece of grit or maybe a scratch cornea or a chemical, you can go ahead, sir, you have your iPad. You wanna make sure that you pad both eyes. At this point, I have a piece of gauze and I have a triangular bandage. So you wanna make sure that both eyes are covered before we wrap. The problem is the eyes track together. So if you have an injury in one eye and you only cover that eye, when this eye moves around, the injured eye is going to move also and may cause more damage. Now the other issue is if you actually have some impaled object, hopefully it's not a pen, <laughs> sticking out of the eye, you're going to want to tent this area so that you're not putting any more compression on it, causing any more injury, and you want to make sure that nothing touches it. One idea that you could have is to take a piece of gauze, Pad the area, make sure again you go around the impaled object. And this is just padding. What we've taken is a coffee cup, cut a small bottom portion of it so it has a solid bottom, put another piece of gauze halfway, it's got a smaller hole here, that will be placed on the pad. Now that impaled object is not going to be touched or moved. So we've padded this eye, we've put the cup over it, now we would also put a padding over the other eye, if you could just hold that, thank you. Then we could use any kind of gauze, of course we're demonstrating triangular gauze. You wanna fold this up probably about four inches and we're going to be putting this gently over both eyes, not over the ears, because you wanna make sure they can hear and then we will be tying it in the back. Not too tight. Because again, we're not causing pressure, we're just covering. So you're gonna make a gentle tie. And then you can tuck these pieces in the back so they're not hanging out. And let me show them this tucked right here. And now both eyes are covered this is stabilized so that nothing can knock it, and that's how we would treat an eye injury. Okay, here's a demonstration of the arm sling. You have your triangular bandage, you have a pointy end, and you have a very long end. What you would like to do is have the patient keep their arm stabilized. So, sir, if you could just hold your arm in place. I'll let you know when to let go. You wanna take the long part and gently slip it underneath the injured arm. You wanna place the top part of the long side over the shoulder. You wanna bring the lower part up around the hand. Okay, if you could just let go for a moment. You wanna adjust it so that this triangular piece is actually all the way up to the pinky so that the hand is nice and supported. Go ahead and put your arm back there, sir. You wanna bring the top shoulder part and the long bit that was down together Make a nice knot in the back. I do a double knot. Okay, that seems to be a good position. You wanna take the excess material back here. You can do a few things. You can actually twist it so that you have a pocket for the elbow and tuck it in. Or you can take the excess and you can make a knot like so. It comes with a safety pin and you can actually also use that to secure this part. But you wanna make sure that the hand is against the body, that it's not too tight on the neck and it doesn't swing around. You can also use an extra piece of triangular bandage. Make sure it's not too tight, too twisted, too small. About that wide is good, probably two or three inches. And you wanna go across the chest, not the actual injured arm, and then I'm gonna show you this here and secure this with a double knot. 
so that the arm then cannot swing away from the body in case the person needs to move. And that just makes a little more stabilization. Again, you don't want this too narrow because you don't want it to cut into the arm. There we go. And you'll be nice and stable. These aren't the only ways you can use triangular bandages. How about bleeding wounds? Well, the bandage itself can be taken right out of the package, would be a reasonable barrier for you to use to apply direct pressure on an injury. You can use one or several to pack into the wound as well. If you're in a survival setting and the triangular bandages have run out, you can actually make your own out of pretty much any found cloth. If you do, try to make it in the form of a right triangle with dimensions of a good 40 inches by 40 inches by 56 inches. Choose a sturdy fabric like an old bed sheet. Cut the fabric into a square 40 by 40 inches, then in half diagonally, you might consider boiling your improvised bandage supply or otherwise disinfecting them in case they have to be used on an open wound. Besides dressing injuries, a triangular bandage can be used as a separator between layers of gravel and sand in an improvised water filter. It can be used as a face mask. And I'll bet you out there know a number of other uses which I haven't mentioned yet. I hope that you'll share them in the comments section below. This is Joe Alton, MD, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits, books, and more at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.